Okay, we're going to be doing live commentary on this one. So I'll be joining you with this journey, this driving test. The student here we're going to call A, student A. They've got the real driving test. So this is a real driving test at Greenford Test Centre. Now the examiner's just given him this huge speech, which I cut out. And at this point, they've asked them to move away when they're ready. Just try and stay as relaxed as possible. Now, at the beginning of your driving test, your examiner will give you all of this big speech and they'll say stuff that you're probably not going to understand. If you do want them to repeat it, please do ask them. They're more than willing to repeat themselves a few times over if needed, as long as we get the idea and we understand. Now, Greenford Driving Test Centre is straight ahead. I'm guessing the examiner's asked him to turn right. So at this point, you would have been given directions to turn right. The car in front has clearly cut the corner. That means that centre line in the middle of the road. That's a corner cut. That could be a serious driver fault. So way back where the examiner's asked us to turn right. Mirrors, signal. And... Approach junction slowly. As you can see, there's parked cars on the main road where the shops are and the test center is. And you've got a zebra crossing here that's quite hidden by the shadow. Hey, there was someone standing there. There was someone standing there at the crossing. That's a serious driver fault. Guys, if you don't believe me, rewind. Look in the shadow. Between the contrast of the light and the shadow, there was someone standing there on the right hand side. None of the cars stopped. That is a serious driver fault. Already, we could actually have failed this driving test. We're going to do the results at the end, so I don't know um, what happens. So we're going to all get to that point at the end. If you want to, then you can skip forward. You guys are lucky, right? So it looks like the examiner's asked us to pull over and stop here on the left. This is done quite nicely, and we do want to do those mirrors and signals, even though there's a side road. You can see it in the rear view camera. Do those early, maybe five car lengths before where we're going to pull over. Five car lengths before where we're going to turn. That's always a good sort of distance. Make sure that we stop next to raised curb. So if you have a look on the left, you'll see the raised curb. So we're just going to stop next to raised curb. We'll allow plenty of space before the next part vehicle to move away. So we can see the road clearly. Uh, good observations before we move off. Blind spot checks, as you can see, the learner driver car that's just come around the back from the side road there. So if we don't do our blind spot checks, we're not going to see those vehicles. So just going to do those blind spot checks again. As you can see, within a few seconds, situations change. That's an old Ford Fiesta, right? Bombing it down the road. Um, and there we go. So we call it a double blind spot check. So we're just looking over your shoulder to the most dangerous side. And I just give a another reference to the double blind spot check so just check in again over your shoulder before you drive away just in case and i think that's the ford fiesta so it didn't get very far and i'm pretty sure we're going to be following that so turning left so mirrors again inside outside following the learner following the ford focus i think it's focus and you can drive on those lines there on the left if it's safe, go. The visibility is not the greatest there. I was just watching that pedestrian there at the bus stop. I thought they were going to cross the road. So if that was the case, then we're going to do our inside mirror. Check to see how close the traffic is behind. Regardless, if a pedestrian steps out, we may have to do an emergency stop. So we're just going to stop. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this guy is on a mission. Okay, so we're approaching the crossroads coming up here. There's a sign on the left that shows you where all the different directions are or uh, areas are. So you've got all the different arrows and the names of the different ways. So we're turning right. Very good positioning, very early from the student A. We're going to follow the Ford Fiesta. Sorry, Focus. It's the old one. It looks a little bit like the Fiesta, but yeah, it's the old Focus. Okay. Just going to sit here and wait at the world's longest traffic light and um, probably do a show me, tell me question. So for your driving test, at the beginning, the examiner will ask you to tell me question. You also do an eyesight test, so to read a number plate, about 20 meters. And then you'll do the tell me question. 
And the tell me question would be something like, tell me how you know your lights would be working. All the light questions just answer by turning them on, check reflections. It might be under the bonnet. So tell me how you know that you've got enough engine coolant, engine oil, brake fluid, windscreen wiper fluids. So you're going to answer the same answer. I'd check the minimum and maximum levels. So some of these questions, we did all the light questions with one answer. We did all the under the bonnet questions, or if you're from the States, number one audience is from the USA. I can't believe it. Uh, so shout out to the States. Um, then under the hood, then it's always the same answer. Check the minimum and maximum markings. Okay, I didn't lie about this traffic light being the world's longest traffic light. Another thing that might happen on your driving test, remember on a real driving test here, we're probably feeling quite nervous, um, is the examiner might try to break the silence at one point. They do ask a generic question. It can be quite boring along the lines of, so if you weren't doing your driving test today, what would you be doing? Do you study? Do you work? Sort of generic sort of, you know, chit chat questions. If you want to keep your answers short and sweet so you can maintain focus, I would highly recommend that. If you're a bit of a chatterbox like me, then you can have a full-blown conversation. Just make sure that you maintain your focus at all times. So we're lucky we caught the traffic light. That's really nice. Uh, everyone else has stopped. So at this crossroads, all traffic stopped for us, and we can just go when we get the green light. So pretty straightforward. We've got the crossing here coming up. See if you can spot it. Zebra pole, beacon, flashing, seen it now. Traffic on the right's gonna obstruct pedestrians. Is there anyone there? Ooh, look at that. That was a guess, by the way. We had that cyclist. It looked like they were coming straight at us. Um, no movie quotes. And we've got some lorry here, guy jumping in. Might have to slow down, stop. Quite tight, very busy. Okay, so keep your eyes peeled. This is Greenford Road. It's always very, uh, very busy. And we've got 20 mile an hour limit. Most of the roads in Greenford, apart from the big roads like the dual carriageways, are generally around 20 now. We've been following this focus for a while, huh? Okay, this road is just like really, really slow moving. As you can see, there's lots of traffic, etc. Pedestrian crossing shops. Um, what I might do is just cut this bit. We'll skip to the top of the road. Okay, change of plan. What's actually happened on this driving test is they weren't supposed to turn right at that traffic light. Anyways, it doesn't matter where you go on your driving test, as long as you do it safely. I cannot stress that enough. If you're new to the channel, you may not have heard me say that before. I'm still following that focus, by the way. Um, but you will hear me say it a lot. Okay, it's so important to know, so it just relieves that pressure on the driving test. Okay, that's fine. I've gone a different way. Absolutely fine. I'm just going to listen to my examiner now. So what the examiner is doing is the examiner is now giving them new direction. The sat-nav still on, going, do this, do that. And the examiner is saying, look, just don't listen to the sat-nav. That can be a bit distracting, but they will tell you, just don't listen to it, follow the road ahead, and I will give you the direction instead. Now, the examiner is telling them to take the next road on the left. Okay, so remember, we're still on Greenford Road. Uh, we saw the whole high street there, so you saw the shops just now. The focus is gone. Bye-bye, focus. See you later. All that rush to just park their car by the shops. Anyways, so this is the road on the left. The mirrors again, signal, nice and gentle. It's quite narrow. Is there any oncoming traffic? Yes. All right. Nice positioning. Don't go in too much, so there's enough room to let them pass, but no more. So just enough room for them to get past us. And then we're going to move back out. Nice positioning, nice speed, take it nice and gentle, it's quite a narrow road. Less space, less speed, rule number one of driving. All right, got some people here with the doors open. What else have we got? Oncoming traffic, right, there's a little gap on the left, so we're going to gently check the mirror behind, slow down because there's a car behind us, move in, no, all right, we're going to take option B. So we're going to slow down here, move in, no, okay, we're going all the way to option C. Wow, that... Mercedes is being quite nice. They're in the bush. Uh, okay, right. Normally, I would say go with option A. When These are meeting situations, by the way. The oncoming traffic has priority because there's no parked cars. There's no obstructions on this side of the road. Anyways, option A, we could have moved in. 
Option B would be brilliant, okay? B for brilliant. But option C, a bit difficult. Anyways, it seemed like we managed that one. I wouldn't say there was any serious driver faults there because that oncoming traffic slowed down and stopped for us. We didn't force them to slow down and stop. If we had forced that traffic to slow down and stop, we would have most definitely received a serious driver fault. People call them major driver faults. So it's a serious or dangerous driver fault. Following the road here, no signal necessary. It's just a bend in the road, following the lines like a train on the train tracks. Here we have this oncoming traffic again. Nice little mirror checks, I'm assuming, to move out. Moving back in, maybe check the mirrors on the left. If we move out, check the mirrors on the right. Just to check for any uh, motorbikes, basically. Okay, so this is a little bit of a new route. Um, it seems like we're probably going to take some side roads somewhere and do a manoeuvre. Actually... I might be wrong about that. I think if you stay with us till the end of the video, we're actually going to go into a car park that I didn't recognize. I just saw it just briefly on the video files. So this might be quite new to me. I have done Greenford for about four years. Um, but this is, this is one of the routes I would not do with my students, if I'm being honest with you. So I do know the roads roughly, but... Anyways, I digress. Again, any oncoming traffic, there it is. Option A, no. Option B, kind of. Good. It's making progress. Nice. Good position. These oncoming vehicles just look like they're in the bush to me. Maybe it's just the camera. They look so close. Let's see if it looks the same when we've got another oncoming car, right? Oh no, okay, it's me just seeing things. Uh, there is one now though, and there's a pedestrian. Okay, so this one's not in the bush. Any more? No, it's a long road. Okay, on a road like this, you'll probably get a show me question. So remember we talked about the tell me question earlier? Show me question might be, how do you turn on your lights? So we talked about how you check their working. Now the examiner might ask you to show them how you turn them on. So just cover that with your driving instructor. Um, other show me questions, maybe wash the windows, open and close the window, demiss the windows, lots of window questions. Right, here we have a width restriction, 6.6, six, that is the smallest width restriction. Also approaching it at an angle, so we want to be nice and straight, nice and early, nice and slow. Oh, no, we at the left. Did you see? Oh, boy. Oh. Um... <laughs> this is live commentary if you are still with us and i haven't mentioned this yet please do leave a like it really does help to pay for those tire repairs <laughs> and it's free free for you not for me anyways back to the road at hand i'm seeing this student again soon by the way so when i saw this uh, footage on my dash cam i was like all right let me cover this make sure i can help them um we'll be having words let's just uh leave it there anyways okay we're pulling over and stopping on the left let's see how close we get to the curb this time no they're just swerving in and oh, okay this is the maneuver right so what we're doing here is we're pulling over and stopping on the right Ooh, interesting situation i think they've done quite well stop though stop 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay, if you've got that car that's on coming there, it's fine, right? But when it gets that close, just put the brakes on, stop. Let them pass, like that distance, the white car, the red car now, okay? Let them pass, then you can move <laughs> safe, right, to your observations. Okay, now that we've pulled over and stopped on the right, I think it's pretty decent, okay? I don't think... There'll be any serious to that. Remember, we're going to get to the results at the end. We're doing this all live together. It's quite interesting for me as well. Um, we've got to reverse back now two car lengths. So this is the maneuver. Pull over and stop on the right. The examiner has now asked them when it's safe. That means when there's no traffic. I'd like you to reverse back and stop roughly two car lengths. Okay. Don't worry about driveways, yellow lines, speed bumps. Just reverse back two car lengths. 
and come to a stop a reasonable distance from the curb. So remember we talked about this big speech that you'll get at the beginning of your test. You'll get these big speeches in the middle for your maneuver, maybe your emergency stop. Some of the words might not make sense, okay? Um, so ask your examiner to repeat them again if you're not sure. So nice clear road. I'm sure the obse observations are fine. Just notice that bicycle coming. And I'd say probably, look, that's about, two car lengths the whole time so just stop here secure your car if you want to handbrake neutral if you're in a manual otherwise just you know put yourself back into drive hold the brake pedal oh okay we're going back a little bit more so stop for the cyclist it looks like they're trying to get a bit closer to the curb i think they've maintained the same distance from the curb the whole time obviously it's a little bit tricky to see on the video but what i'm looking at is the pavement the curb line on the right where the road ends and the pavement starts, that grey stone. And just seeing where that is on the bonnet. Again, if you're from America, the hood. Um, and just seeing where that lies. So there. That's, whoa. See how it's moving so much across. The, mm. Now they've angled the car diagonal. So we're kind of doing this weave now as we're coming back, like a zigzag. And you know we mentioned about those cars when there's oncoming traffic and it's that close. Put the brake on. Stop. Um, that's a serious driver fault. With or without the observations, it's because it could affect the control. The, eh, look, okay, just stop. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. I think that's the maneuver done. So the examiner will now, if they could have stopped way earlier, when the bicycle came, we could have stopped there, probably would have been quite good. The examiners aren't too fast. I thought it was about two car lengths. Anyways, let's hope he didn't fail for this. And like I said, the examiner will now tell you to drive on. So observations all round. Remember we talked about the most dangerous side being the traffic. So because we stopped on the right, remember we've got to look over the left shoulder now. Hope that makes sense to the traffic, the most dangerous side. So make sure you do that double blind spot check again. It's a very good habit. And that's a callback to what we mentioned earlier when we moved off. We've got a lot of these sort of residential roads on this route. A lot of these meeting situations. Now it's nice here because the cars are parked on the pavement. We do have these bicycle lanes here with these bollards. That looks super close to me. Remember we hit the curb earlier as well when we went through the width restriction? It's very... I'm actually getting anxiety watching this. Um, it's very important for everybody and especially people that have been driving on the right side, so from other countries. We'll call back America, actually. Just checking to see how close that oncoming traffic is. It looks like we're so close to the pavement on the left. Now, that's what we're talking about, the pavement on the left. So you are from other countries where you've been driving on the opposite side to the UK, then that's even more important. But for everybody, it's so important. We've got to give like, let's go extreme, 100% attention to the left side of the vehicle. Because where we're seated in the car, it's further away. It's very hard for us to judge. So we need to give it more attention. Roundabout. I'm guessing straight. Let's see if I'm correct. Second exit. Probably completely wrong. But from the positioning, that should be where we're going. If we were turning left, obviously we'd be a lot closer to that curb, um, the edge of the pavement where the road ends and the pavement begins, the curb stone, that grey stone on the left where the motorbike is. Nice riding from the motorbike there. Um, that would be position for turning left. Okay, so it looks safe, didn't it? You could see there, there was no traffic. We're using the right lane, which is interesting. You can, because there's no road markings, use the right lane to go straight. That's second exit. That's where I thought we might go, but it looks like we're going to go one more. All right, excellent. So we're turning right then. So now we're going to exit. Some mirrors inside, outside, left. Nice positioning, good steering, good speed. Slow on the entry to the roundabout, fast on the exit. Now we're on Rainer's Lane route. And what was quite nice is, again, I did kind of see a little clip. The only clip I saw, mum's life, um, is the examiner, looks like they're asking them to pull up on the left here. So remember the mirrors and signals, signals are very important. 
That looks like good position and good speed. Maybe they could be a tiny bit closer. And the examiner will ask you to stop roughly about one car length away from the vehicle in front. This is just part of the test. So you can see they're slightly edging up. So at some point, your test examiner will ask you to do this. Don't get too close, though. That's it. That's way too close. No, bro, stop. And another thing the examiner was nice enough to say, very nice examiner, um, is that there's a bus lane coming up. That's a very important bus lane. We're going to get back to that in just a second. So in the meantime, we're really close to this car. If we were in a manual, this would be really important. So clutch control. This is called an angled start. It's the reason why the examiner sort of asked us not to get this close, <laughs> but about a car length away. So we're, way, we're like half a car length, if that. Um, and then move off, okay? So the clutch control, just hold that biting point. Let the car move out gently. Once the front corner of our car has gone past the back corner of the parked car, hope that makes sense. That's when we start to steer back to the left. Then we start to straighten the vehicle up. And that was nice. So it's a nice controlled speed. Now's the roundabout. Bus lane on the exit. There's a tiny little sign here on the lamppost. It's so small. It says bus lane ahead. So if you're doing your driving test at certain times, you can use the bus lane. That's the afternoon times. If you're not, and you're doing it in the morning, then you must avoid the bus lane. So this is a morning test. So the exam was quite nice. He said, look, there's a bus lane ahead. So the um, student was kind of questioning him, which was nice. And he said, just to remember, I just told you, go straight, but there's a bus lane ahead. So that's really nice for me to know, but not all examiners will tell you things like this, okay? He's just being considerate. So we're going to avoid it, right? Because we're the morning test. We can't go into it. So now we're passing the first exit. Mirrors, mirrors, signal, left. Avoid the bus lane. If you're doing an afternoon test after 10 a.m., use the bus lane. Have a look for any buses ahead because they might obstruct it. Otherwise, use the bus lane. Normally, you're going to turn left to Rainer's Lane here. So this could be a time where we would cross over to the left. Looks like that's what we're doing. Maybe not. But you can see the line is broken. Okay, here we go. So the line's broken. That means you can cross. A solid line means no crossing. So you can see the difference there on the right side. It's a new bus lane on the right of that solid line. And it's usually left, left. Wow, that was done way too fast. That was done way too fast. The examiner's now asking the show me question. We did have a little brief talk about the show me question. Here the examiner is saying when it's safe, and you can see the back window wiper going off. I'd like you to show me how you'd wash the back window. Now, just the wiper by itself is usually not enough. So we're gonna see if they do it again with some of the water. You can see they're quite close to the left again there. So as they're trying to do this, Show me question. Look at the position of the vehicle and the speed of the vehicle. Sometimes that's what happens. People lose control of the vehicle while trying to operate the switch. And that's enough to get a serious driver fault as well. I don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> okay. There is a myth out there. You can't fail for the show me, tell me question. It's pretty true. But if you lose control of the vehicle, that could be a serious so just take your time. That's why the examiner starts that question with when it's safe. So you could wait until you stop at the traffic light if you'd like to, um, just whenever you feel it's safe. So it's like we're positioning for a right turn here, and we've got crossroads up ahead. So crossroads, the general rule is that two cars wait inside the crossroads in the middle. So if you look at the middle of the road here, we've got some white lines in the middle there with white lines inside them. That's going to lead up to the traffic light. We don't want to go over that, but we're going to go through the traffic light and into the middle, keeping to the middle of the road. Now, if we're the third car, stop here. Uh -uh. So now we're on a pedestrian crossing. It's putting us in a vulnerable situation. If the traffic light ahead suddenly changes and we get stuck here, game over. If we're the third car, what we want to do, if you look at the rear view mirror here, is stop where the silver Nissan is behind. Until there's enough space to enter into the crossroads, 
and then if it's safe, make our way across to the right. So the general rule for crossroads, two car rule, two car rule, two car rule. And if you're not the second car, wait at the solid line at the traffic light. Looking a little slow. Okay, so we're, we're going into a right turn here. Don't do it. Yeah, keep your foot on the brake unless, yeah, someone flashed the lights there, then go. The examiner could be a bit twitchy there. So the oncoming traffic's still oncoming, yet we're kind of stepping over that solid line that we talked about earlier at the crossroads. So keep to your side of the solid line. Don't cross over it. If the examiner feels like we're going to cross over and there's oncoming traffic, they may put the brake on. That obviously would be a serious driver fault. So just take care there. We're looking at that line of the pavement here as we're coming to stop on the left. And you can see, oh, look like we just bumped into the pavement. I think that's the second time now, isn't it? Now, bumping into the pavement might not be a serious driver fault, but kind of mounting the curb or hitting the curb, this could damage the tire. This could be more likely to be a serious driver fault. So take your time when you're pulling over to stop on the left. You must always check your inside mirror, outside mirror and signal. Always signal when you pull over to stop on the left and always signal, as the examiner will ask us now, to drive on again. So always signal to pull up and stop and always signal to go again. Okay, it's very important. If we don't do that on the driving test, we could also, again, get a serious driver fault. Sometimes people call them major driver faults. You can receive 15 minor driver faults and still pass. It's quite a common question. If we receive 16 minor driver faults, that would be a fail. If we receive one serious or dangerous driver fault, what people may call a major driver fault, that is game over. Unfortunately, you can't reload your last save point. Now, the examiner's asked us to do an emergency stop here. So get ready, hand up, and watch out for the dog. Is it safe? No cars? Yep. And stop! 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 Almost. And now, that's not the hard part. You just slam the brake on, effectively. Every driving instructor in the UK will hate me for that, but that is what you do. Slam your foot on that brake pedal. The hard part is not doing the observations before moving off. So you've got to look all the way over the left shoulder, all the way over the right shoulder. What happened to my footage there? Something seemed to have skipped. It's perfectly fine, everybody. You're just going to have to trust me on that one. So for some reason, we just had a little second or two. Skip out of the video there. Um, back to the road. We can see it's nice and narrow. We love these lovely narrow streets. And the bend. Oh, is there an oncoming car? It's so hard to see. So when you're in these streets here, we've got to do what the examiners would record as an appropriate speed. There are roads like this could be 30 miles an hour. Now, sometimes going into a bend that we can't see, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? We don't want to be bombing it in at 30 miles an hour. That would be a little bit dangerous, okay? It wouldn't give us enough time to react. So the um, appropriate speed is having a speed that we would have time to react. So that may vary quite a lot. So if you want a rough guide, I'd say for a road like this is good speed, by the way, that the student's doing. Uh, sort of a jogging speed, maybe a running speed, but just be careful about 30 in those kind of conditions. 20 can be pretty decent. Okay, I guess we're turning left. Positions are turning right, so we take it back. We're doing a right turn. I'm just checking the car behind, but yeah, all good. Nice, clean quick that's how the examiners like it and we're probably just heading back towards the test center now so if you haven't left a like already please do thank you for staying with us up until now i'm very curious to find out what is going to happen at the end here so so far good for avoiding the bus lane i just want to quickly talk about this you see the lorry that was kind of stepping over there um, you can enter into the bus lane if it's safe we don't want to go 100% in the bus lane, but to avoid an oncoming lorry, <laughs> um, yes, definitely enter across that solid line into the bus lane slightly to avoid having an accident. Turning left at the traffic lights, the solid line ends, move back across to the left. Why are we leaving it so late? No, what are you doing slowing down? It looks like it's going to stop. 
Okay, fair enough. Cool. We're going left, so I don't know why we're in this lane. So where that solid line ends, the bus lane ends, look ahead, see if you can see any more bus lanes, but there's no blue signs, so that means there's no more bus lanes. So what we're going to do is keep to the left here. We could get a serious driver fault for this. Let's see how long we stay in the right lane. If we stay in here for like, I'd say, uh, most people do kilometers now, so let's say about half a kilometer. Yeah, look, the vehicle on the left is going to pass us. That's a serious... So I was trying to record how many serious I, I thought we've got so far. That's one. So someone has to undertake us, pass us on the left, serious driver fault. We're going straight ahead at the roundabout. Again, we do want to use the left lane unless road markings tell us otherwise, or signs, um, to use the left lane to go straight at the roundabout, 12 o'clock. Now we're kind of in the middle, so we might obstruct traffic behind. As you can see, there is no traffic behind, so not important. Oh, there's, there's police, but... And have they got the blue lights on? I think they've got the blue lights on. Yep. Ooh, look at that. Little overtake from the cops there on the roundabout. Student didn't do too well there, actually. They could have probably slowed down a little bit more. Anyways, I digress. So we uh, had a right lane straight ahead at that roundabout. Not the best lane to use. Try to use the left lane. We can all watch what's happening here together. We've done this before earlier. It does look like we're too close. Interesting place to be stopping, by the way. I didn't know this. Uh, once when we went through the width restriction, we went over the pavement. So that may be a serious driver fault for that one as well. And I feel like there's one more that I'm forgetting. We'll find out at the end. All right, so are we taking too long to get go? Wah! Mm -mm -mm. Go, 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 go. Okay, that was a bit better. My heart was in my mouth, as you probably tell. Um. Yeah, we've got one more roundabout coming up, I believe. Same again, straight, second exit. So remember, we kind of, we're just talking about it, right? The right lane, unless you see signs saying left only, road marking saying left only, good for going there. Keep the left lane, not like the learner car. Keep Try and keep the left a bit more. Or whatever it doesn't matter you can keep the right as well but here we want to check the interior mirror left mirror signal left and move across into that left lane so if we're already in the left lane we avoid having to do that before exiting the roundabout which is why i'm going to show that up <laughs> leave a like it's free okay we're heading back towards the test center we're not even that far now so this is Rainer's Lane. I think this was the route that the examiner actually initially wanted to take us on at the beginning, where we had the world's longest traffic. Are you kidding me? Very nice pub on the left there. And now we're going straight ahead. You can go right at this roundabout, but a lot of people don't see it. So sometimes examiners will be quiet. Nothing said. Follow the road ahead. No one on the right. Nice progress. Good roundabout. So you can see the student definitely identified the roundabout because they slowed down enough. It's a downhill there as well. And they're just slowing down, obviously, which means they're looking. They're doing observations. And then they made progress because we could all see that there was no traffic on the right to stop for. So if there's no one on the right, trying to keep progress. Okay, we're going to be approaching a traffic light a little bit further ahead. Still got some road to go. 20 miles an hour. We talked about that at the beginning as well. So we're coming back to our sort of nursing area back towards the test center narrow roads oncoming lorry less space less speed students handling that well brilliant traffic lights just going to be a bit further ahead that's the world's longest traffic light that's where i think instead of going straight which would have took us to this road the student accidentally turned right and then we went down those little side roads. Uh, if you're tuning back in and tried to skip forwards to 
the results. I'm assuming in about two minutes we should be parked up. And this is where I will have to cheat slightly and just have a little listen into the results. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to give you the live feedback in real time. So there's nothing that you're going to miss out on. But I need the juicy gossip so I can share it with my audience. Guys, follow, like, really is free. <laughs> Promise you. And it does help a lot. I'm sure you know that already. Okay, traffic lights here. It looks like there's lots of people. Oh, look, there's that van that overtook us earlier. Like the Ford Focus we had at the beginning. This has been quite an <laughs> eventful journey at Greenford Driving Test Centre. Okay, we're in the wrong lane again. Remember what I said earlier? <laughs> Keep to the left unless road markings or signs tell us otherwise. Or as Beyonce says... To the left, to the left. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, you can use this lane to go straight. The learner in front has been doing the same. So that's the same learner that we saw at the last two roundabouts or last three roundabouts, mini one included. Um, they were going straight. They were using the right lane to go straight as well. We did just mention this callback. If there's no road markings, you can use the right lane to go straight. It does put us in that little vulnerable position, hence why the left lane is usually the safest lane, because as we change from the right lane to the left lane to exit the roundabout, we have to cross over a lane, don't we? So if there's someone there, it just puts us in that awkward position. So generally use the left lane uh, for your driving test. It's very important. Um, we had that one series that I can remember, the other one, the pavement, I can remember. I think there's one more. I'm saying three. How many are you saying? In the comments, I really want to know. Uh, if you've got to this point, you put that in the comments. I know you've watched the whole video as well, so just chuck a number in there, and we'll see what happens. Um, the world's longest traffic light again. What can I say? <laughs> we just have to wait. <laughs> this is the most boring part of the whole test, this traffic light. Okay, here we go. Come on now. You can do it, Lerner. All right, there are parked cars on the other side on the left. So in fact, this might be a slightly better lane. No parked cars today? Usually there's parked cars here. And then we kind of have to move out, you know, because there's parked cars. All good. Anyway, so those two lanes that go straight have now become one. So they do merge together. Now, this part coming up is... A difficult one for me to give advice on as an instructor. I want us to try and come to some conclusion together. Because if you ask the examiners, they just say when it's safe. The situation, as you'll see coming up next, there is a keep clear zone in the middle of the road. I'm glad that we've got that learner in front so we can see what they're going to do. If there's oncoming traffic, you have to stop in the keep clear zone to turn right. Which could be a serious driver fault. So I don't know. I need to try and nail one of these examiners down. Oh, here we go. They didn't turn you, the learner. We're going to turn. No, there's the keep clear. No oncoming traffic. Happy days. Smooth sail through. Now, if you wanted to nail me to the board and get an answer from me, I'd say take your correct position for turning right. If there's oncoming traffic, you stop there. If that means your vehicle's in the keep clear, so be it. Because you need that safe position for your right turn. You need it to see. You need it to position for the traffic behind to try and pass us. So that's the safest position to be in, regardless of that road marking. So stop there, wait there until it's safe, and then turn. Okay? And um, you can hold me to that one. I've, I've put it out there now. I'm going to probably... Get in trouble for that one, but uh, I believe that's the right move to make. So, if anyone knows any different, let me know. Okay, here we are. We're back at the driving test center. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is the bit where I'm gonna have to be a bit nosy. But the driving test center, oh, we had that person at the beginning, didn't we? There, hiding in that shadow. Do you remember at the zebra crossing? Um, driving test center's here on the right. And we're going to turn left here and then pull over and stop on the left straight away. So the examiner's going to say to you, turn left here and then uh, just pull over and stop here anywhere on the left. Just uh, buy one of those trees. Uh, just uh, move up there a little bit and just stop over here. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, just anywhere, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's fine. That's lovely. Cheers. Thank you very much. All right. And now switch your engine off. 
once you switched your engine off, that's the end of my examiner impression, by the way. Sorry to put you through that. Um, that's it. That's the end of your test.